uh, my session is actually for four hours. Okay, so honestly, I, I don't think I'm going to talk for four hours. <laughs> um, but I would like this session to be more of a uh, sharing session. Um, I'm going to share based on the experience that I've had um, as a chairman and as well as an examiner. Uh, please, please feel free um, throughout my my session. You know, um, if you have got a comment, you know, just just um, just say your name because I think once I start presenting, I will not be able to see who's speaking. So just introduce yourself and then you know uh, share. Uh, Tell me if, if you have got comments that you want to also um, share with the rest of us, right? So let me now start sharing. One minute. Are you all able to see my slides? Yes. Yes. OK. Let me put on slideshow. All right. Um, so this this was the title <clears throat> that was given to me for the workshop. Understanding the roles of chairperson and examiner in proposal defense or viva. Right. Um, for those of you who do not know me or have not uh, met, uh, my name is uh, Sodis. I'm the head of school for the School of Business at uh, Slango at Glen Mary. I'm actually dividing my sessions into two sessions, session one and session two. For this first session, I will talk about um, or I'll share in terms of the role of a chairperson. And then the second one will be to understand the role of an examiner. Right. So let me go into session one. So appointment of chair for Viva or proposal defense, right? So I just thought that maybe we can actually start by um, agreeing on what are some of the need to uh, skill sets that we need to have, right? Uh, or what, what would be, maybe I can use the word criteria, right? In terms of appointment of the chair, right? So one would be, of course, there should not be any prior engagement with the student's research. So meaning that um, the chairperson rightfully uh, should not have participated in uh, discussion in developing the student's work. Right? Um, I would like to share with regards to this, I would like to share. Um, I was actually a chairperson for one, one of uh, one of the students. Um, this, this was actually quite recent and um, I, I, I must I must say that, you know, sometimes, you know, like we have got um, our population of students from China is actually quite, quite big. Right. And uh, sometimes. Right. Um, we we I, I, I cannot remember very clearly, especially when I want to be a chairperson. Right. So before before the before I was I became the before I went for that session, uh, a day or two before that, there was a student who wanted to actually come and see me uh, with regards to uh, discussing about um, his uh, research because he said that so he's, he was actually doing something on environment and uh, environmental economics is something that I do as well. So he actually so, you know, I actually came and then he was sitting down and he was discussing and all that. And as he was discussing, then I suddenly realized that, hey, am I not supposed to be a chairperson for this, this student? Right. But so. You know, and then I realized that I said, oh, OK, then I said, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be the chairperson for this. Right. So most likely this is not appropriate. But um, but but by then it was like at, at least towards the end of the session. So this has like happened um, almost almost um, right. Not not intentional. Right. But the minute I realized that, then, you know, I, I put a stop to it. So as a chairperson, I think it's always good for us to just be mindful that we don't engage with the students research prior to that because there could be biases that you know even without us realizing it there might actually be some biases right so that's that's one uh, the other one is it's always good to have a chairperson who has been an examiner whether an internal examiner or an external examiner doesn't matter but have done the role of an examiner simply because 
been an examiner, you would have actually then be exposed to what are the like you know the the scenario itself. You know that you know this this will be the setting. This is what I need to do. So it sort of gives you an idea in terms of what's going to be next. What's next, right? How how would how would uh, an examiner behave? And you would have actually observed the chairperson. So prior knowledge you would have gained if you have an experience as an examiner, right? I think the third one, um, this is most likely a nice to have, but you know, confidence and firmness in challenging situations. 99.9% .9 of the time, things go very smoothly, right? But there's always that 0.1% of the time, right? You know, um, I actually had a case uh, where, and uh, thankfully I was I was not the chairman, but um, when I was actually sitting in for one, one of the proposal defense, right? And these were two senior professors, right? And um, actually when you have professors, right? You're already, uh, you know, they, they, they are experts in their area. So the supervisor and the examiner, right? So there was like a bit of a challenging situation, but, um, the chairperson was really good. The chairperson handled the situation very well, was very firm, right? Uh, the chairperson was also a professor, so it was sort of like in an equal standing. Um, so the, the person had actually managed the situation very well. So like I said, um, confidence and firmness in uh, managing challenging situations is actually rather good, yeah? Um, so this would be, the, the, some of the criteria, right? So based on my experience, I think these are some of the things that we would need to be uh, looking into when we are appointing a chairperson, yeah? Now, moving on. I thought I'll start off with a quick uh, poll, right? So my question is, in your opinion, is it the chair's responsibility to review the thesis before the session? Right, so normally uh, PGRC will send us an email. They will give us the proposal. The research proposal will be given. All the documentations will be given, right? So do you think it's the chair's responsibility to review the thesis before the session? Should you read it or should you not read it? That's, that's the question. Okay. So I have one response so far, and it's a yes. Okay. It's a no, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll give people some time to maybe uh, take out your phone and just scan the QR code. So you can just scan the QR code and um, automatically you'll be going into the polls already. So currently we're at 50%, 50%. Most of us are going for a yes. But about 10, 10 people who have uh, responded to the polls. So we had a 80-20. 80% says yes, 20% says no. Maybe I'll just give another minute or so before I move on to the next, next one. Okay. I'll move on, yeah? So, what does the policy say? So, according to UOW Malaysia policy, the chair is not expected to read the thesis, make any contribution to its evaluation at any stage, 
or to the contribution to the academic judgment on the outcome of the oral examination. So this is this is from the policy itself. I've taken this from the policy. So it says that you do not read it, right? But what is good practice? So yes, the chairperson need not read it, but it's good to be good to review the thesis, right? Uh, simply because we don't want um, the chairman to or the chairperson to actually go for the session and only based their understanding based on the oral presentation. Because in the oral presentation, the student might not actually be covering everything, right? So it's good to review the review the thesis, good practice. Why is it important? Because the chairperson plays a moderating role, right? One, during the viva itself, where you're managing the discussion, especially if there is a bit of a um, conflict, right? Or a disagreement between the examiners or between the examiner and the candidate, right? So you would, you as a chairperson would want to just have sort of an overview of an understanding of what exactly is in the thesis or the uh, research proposal, right? So that's one during the discussion, right? Because if there is going to be argument and we, we as chair, chairperson do not know what's happening, it might be difficult to moderate the session. Yeah. The second one is in during the deliberation. After the oral presentation, the Q&A session, we go for deliberation. During that time, right, the chair's knowledge of the thesis will also help guide some of the decisions, right? So if sometimes, you know, if the examiners are saying, okay, no, this is actually very bad. Okay, we should fail the student immediately. But if the uh, chairperson has actually read it, has an idea, right, we can actually sort of give your opinion, not, not influence the decision or uh, tell them what, what the decision should be, but at least be able to moderate the deliberations as well. So good practice says yes, policy says no. Right. Can I comment? Uh, yes, sure, Dr. Dr. Sotir. Sotir. Yes. I'm of the opinion saying that it is good. And it, I would use the word, maybe change the word. Say, if you say good, then you, it becomes yes and no. Then I would mm. rather say uh, mm. it is a must. I, I change the word now, a must. Because when we come to a disagreement, uh, the policy said when there is an disagreement between the two examiner, the chairperson must come in and decide. Without knowing mm -hmm. the thesis, the report, how can you decide? Mm -hmm. By hearing mm -hmm. on the argument, then the, the decision made by the chairperson become uh, shallow already. So mm -hmm. I would say the chairperson must read, must read. Then only mm -hmm. you understand. Otherwise, you cannot make a wise decision. But that will uh, determine the, total, the entire outcome. Correct. Uh Dr. Lee, just, just one correction to that, though. Um, mm. The chairperson should actually not be involved in the outcome itself, the results itself. The no, chairperson the, should, not, no. should not be involved. No, Meaning? Dr. Soti, the policy yeah. said, should mm. there be a disagreement between the two examiners, the chairperson will moderate, will make decision on the final verdict. That's the policy. Correct. So you moderate. You moderate. Yeah. That means you make the decision. Ah, so so that so that's that's what you don't do, right? Because the minute you moderate and you make a decision, mm. then you are becoming the examiner, right? So I think it's about moderating and coming to a conclusion. So you know, we we go to a point where we say, okay, we agree to disagree, and we we choose this this decision, right? But I don't think it will be the decision of the chairperson to make the final decision, though. The, the, the chairperson can make moderate it. Right? So I, th I think there's a fine difference between that. And I think that's that's quite important, Dr. Wei. Okay. Because sometimes, sometimes the chairperson, you see, the chair, the examiners will be subject area specialists. They will know what, what is that. But the chairperson will not be the, the subject specialist. The chairperson would know um, what is the processes, right, to guide, but might not be the best person to make a decision at the end of the day. So, 
it's stated. I I will uh, have to refer because the, I remember the policy stated that way. Then that the chairperson have to make decision. Should there be any disagreement between the two examiner? So maybe Jasmine can confirm. Yes. So, um, Doctor Oi, we will keep this to to the last. So so we we will give if Jasmine is on on the the side. Okay. Maybe Jasmine can uh. Look at it and then give, and then we can actually discuss on that one. Mm, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Oi. Yeah, Dr. Sauti, uh, basing yes. on uh, what was discussed just now, it's uh, interesting that uh, Dr. Oi brought, brought it up. Now, mm. if, if that's going by what you said, uh, if there's a standoff, right, and you were able to moderate to a, a certain conclusion, then what what do we do then? Do we okay. just continue? I, I, do, I don't think, I think there should be a limit to how the session is, uh, you know, is, is being run, right? So okay. how, how then can we come to a conclusion? Okay, so um, Dr. Dr. Yong, right? Uh, Dr. Yong, I actually yeah. have a slide. I have actually have got a slide um, on this. So I I've, I've actually um, so once once we get there, let's let's uh, spend a little bit of more time in terms of different scenarios, and let's discuss some of the scenarios and how how we would actually maybe come come to an agreement, or how the chair can actually moderate to come to an agreement. So okay. I I have that I have that as one of the slides coming up. Okay, good, good. Yeah, thank okay. you very much. But Okay, let me read uh, from this policy, uh, Dr. Sothi. Page sure. 11, uh, page 11 okay. of the guideline uh, stated, okay. um, item H, if, if, uh, if there was a dispute or disagreement between the examiner on the PR student's result, the chair shall even out to make the final decision. So, That's the policy. Uh, okay. The chair so the will chair make the final decision. Yeah. yeah, so, so the, the chair, chair will make the final decision. Okay. So the chair will even out, meaning mm. that the chair will now have the, will take into consideration both um, okay. the mm. differing views. Mm. That means there must be a reason why there is a differing view. Okay. Right? Mm. And then so based on that, then the chair will then make a decision. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. So, okay. So let's, let's, let's go to that slide. Where, where I said I will be discussing in terms of managing conflicts, <laughs> okay, and then okay. and then we will discuss on this one. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Oi. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm still at um, pre-viva, right? Um, reviewing the candidate's thesis. So do we have to read the entire thesis? No, right? But it's good to review the thesis. So what, what are the key areas? So this is just scanning through the key sections, right? Um, skimming through, right? Um, problem statement. Look at the problem statement. Um, it's good to actually note down as well, right? As what you have understood from the problem statement that the student has given. So what is the problem statement? Understand whether the problem statement and the research questions developed and the objectives are linked, right? Whether the theoretical framework which has come up is actually linked to the objectives and the methodology, right? And this, this will just be a scan through, right? You don't have to go into details. If you are doing a viva, go to the last chapter where there will be a summary, right? Look at the summary to understand whether the objectives So, rightfully a candidate should give a summary in terms of each of the objectives. So let's say if I've got three objectives, then I'll write down and say, okay, this is my findings for my, my objective. So just go to that and say, okay, right? These objectives have been answered. So gives you an overview of what, is been discussed, what's the framework, you know what is the theory being used. So you have an overall view, right? You have a macro view of things. Yeah. So this will be good. So most likely it will take us maybe about um, half, an, half an hour to an hour to just go through, 
right? Write down, make notes, right? In preparation for the viva itself or the, or the proposal defense either way, right? So this is preparing for the session before the session, right? Now, familiarizing with policies, like, you know, like just what uh, Dr. Uri has highlighted. So there are documentation with regards to this, right? And I've actually requested when I was speaking to Dr. Jasmine yesterday, I said, would it be possible if you can actually just maybe post um, these two as attachment in our um, chats so that we have this. So guidelines for research proposal defense, as well as postgraduate research thesis preparation, submission and examination guidelines, where both of these documents actually talk about the role of chairperson and the role of examiners. Yeah. So to go through that and to understand that will actually be good as well. Yeah. So this is pre before before the viva itself. During the day, during the viva, so introduction, start first by introducing uh, yourself. So if you're the chairperson, right, um, give who, who you are and a little bit about what, what you will be doing. What is your role, right? Uh, emphasize that you will be playing a, a moderator role, right? Um, for, and will be actually be guiding the student as well, or the candidate as well, right? Introduce the examiners. Um, it's a matter of protocol, actually, that when we introduce, we will always introduce the external examiners first, right? So normally, um, it will be the first exa examiner, the first examiner, and the second examiner. Normal process for a proposal defense, it's always internal. But when it comes to viva, we will have external examiners, right? So normally, the first examiner will be an external examiner, yeah? So, and go by order of, <clears throat> of seniority, right? So for instance, if you have a professor, introduce the professor first, then introduce your associate professor, right? Things like that. So I know it's a little bit hierarchical, but I think um, the academic community, there's a little bit of a protocol that we would need to follow, right? So go with your external examiners first, then introduce your internal examiners, right? State their name, full title, affiliation, right? Which university they have come from, especially for external examiners, all of this needs to be very, very clearly communicated, yeah? Um, introduce the candidate, formally introduce the candidate and the title of their thesis. Also acknowledge the other attendees who will be present during the session, right? Um, supervisors. So normally, if it's a proposal defense, sometimes it's actually opened up. Other students can also come in. So, okay. Um, but you would most likely just want to acknowledge the supervisors, um, mention the supervisors, and just say, and, and all other participants who are here, who are present. Okay. And I think it's also good to very specifically indicate that the other attendees are only there as observers and they will not be participating, right? Um, again, I've, I have been in sessions where uh, the supervisors, sometimes when the students are not able to answer, the supervisors will volunteer an answer, right? And that should not happen at all. So it's good um, to actually, before the start of the session, just, just do a uh, pre pre um, communication telling them, hey, look, right? So this session is the, the only people who can actually talk during the session will be the examiners, the chairman, and the student, and that's it, right? So this would be an introduction. What do we do next? Dr. Sauti, can I ask a question? Sure. It's interesting that you mentioned about other attendees. Uh, and yeah. you did mention about other attendees other than the supervisor. Yes. So my question is that uh, can students attend uh, PD? Is that okay. possible? Students other than, of course, uh, the person that's presenting, can they okay. attend PD? Okay. Um, I, this one, I would need Dr. Jasmine to help me out with this. But in, in the past, in my previous previous life, um, I've had, normally it's opened up actually, 
normally is opened up simply because uh, it gives the students an opportunity to observe and learn. So that, that platform, we actually invite other students, we allow other students to sit in, not for Viva, but for proposal defense, they are actually allowed to, to learn from the session. So I have this in the past, um, but like I said, I'm not experienced this at uh, UOW, uh, but maybe, and, and I think if I'm not mistaken, if my memory serves me right, I think I had raised this question and the answer was no, we don't, we don't open it up. So maybe Dr. Jasmine can just confirm that. But why? Uh, why? Yes, currently, right, at UOW, right, we still do not open it up, all right? Uh, moving forward, right, we are actually looking into the possibility we'll have actually for a colloquium so that the other student can participate. Not for proposal defense because uh, the justification is that, right, as uh, some of those, right, uh, the examiners and also, right, uh, we are not to that experience to handle the situation well so if uh with the student present day it may not uh project a very positive or a very good image to the student so we, we understand that the right open up is actually a good opportunity but uh not at this moment all right okay thank you thank you dr jasmine and and i think i i sort of align with uh what dr jasmine is saying as well um simply because i and i think when we um we are more experienced in handling this, right? And more of us have gone in and, and done the sessions as examiners and as chairperson. I think then opening it up will be better. But I, I guess at this point, um, you know, it, it might it might be a bit more overwhelming for the students as well. If they're coming in, you know, and they're seeing the examiners, you know, if they're very um vigorous in, in the way they're questioning them, you know, you might actually scare the, the, the potential or the, the future uh, proposal defense candidates, right? So, I mean, I, I can see, I can see the justification in that as well. And yes, but may, hopefully, hopefully we will reach there sooner than later. Yes. Is that, is that okay? I mean, it's, it's not a question of okay or not okay, Dr. Soti, the, the, mm. the I, I guess at the end of the day, it's all about maturity of the process. Uh, and as far as maturity of the process, there will always be new examiners coming in and there will always be a standoff. There will always be conflict. You know, this all this bound to happen. I, I guess the question is that, you know, how then do you handle that kind of situation? And it goes back to what you have just uh, pointed out earlier on, that perhaps our process as of today may not be that mature yet and, and maybe later on when the majority of the examiners have certain uh, amount of experience uh, would probably be a better time. So in, in that sense, I, I would buy it. Yeah, I would think that that, yeah, for now, maybe it's not a time. Yeah. Thank you. So for, for sure, I think we will definitely get there and I think that we'll get there sooner than, than we expect, yes. So during, during the session, outlining the structure uh, for the benefit of, more for the benefit of the student is actually quite important, right? So um, provide a uh, brief over outline of how the session will proceed, right? Um, telling the students, so let's say, for example, if it's a proposal defense, then, you know, it's, it's actually going to be for two hours and tell the students what the two hours is actually going to be, or if it's three hours, Right. Um, what what the three hours or two hours or three hours going to be? What does it um, compose of? Right. So tell tell the students you will be doing an oral presentation for this long. Right. Uh, you will be doing it for fifteen minutes, or if it's a viva, you'll be doing it for half an hour. Right. We will have a Q and A session. Right. After which we will then go and then we will deliberate. Right. And then we'll come back and then we will let you know. So the student will know, OK, so this whole session is actually going to take about that time. And this is how it's, it's going to be divided. Right. Um, go specifically in terms of the oral presentation as well, because I think the student needs to be the, the student most likely knows. But then it's good for at that point to um, let the student know and the examiners as well. Right. To tell them, look, the candidates will be given the time. How long will you be given, right? Um, 
I'll most likely prompt you, right? Uh, 15 minutes or 10 minutes before I'll prompt you. If, if it's a half an hour session, I'll prompt you at 15, I'll prompt you at 10, I'll prompt you at five, right? And then I'll prompt you at two or something like that, right? Um, state that when the time is up, say that you know it's it's not negotiable that you will stop the candidate from presenting irrespective of how much the student has need to go somewhere right so maybe you want to tell the student so when i tell you that you have another 5 minutes left you might be you would want to now quickly go into areas which are important all right so also at this point i've not included this as a point but i'm just thinking even for our examiners as well just to inform them ahead of time that, hey, look, um, you will be given a total of one hour. The entire Q&A session will actually be for one hour that, you know, um, we we would need to break this up. And after one hour, I will need, I will, if it's going to extend beyond that, if it's necessary, we will give maybe a five minutes extension. But, you know, if not, we will actually stop, right? So to also share that with the examiners. So putting it ahead of time, telling everyone, so everyone is, knows that this is this is the structure right so after which we will invite the candidate to present yeah now after the candidate has done the presentation then we go into the q and a right now normally the chairperson will invite the first examiner right uh, so if there is an external examiner invite the external examiner to go first so this is at the beginning right so let's say, for example, we have a, we have we are breaking it up into a couple of um, the mode of how the questioning is going to go, right? So the first this one we are going to go, let's say, for chapter one, right? For the chapter one, we have invited the external examiner to go first. Then maybe chapter two, we will say, okay, can I then invite the um, examiner, the second examiner, to raise the question? So you can actually rotate in that sense, but your first onset always give the preference to the external examiner or the first examiner, right? Now, in terms of the questioning, right? Um, I, I've had experience in uh, chairing the sessions and one of the things that I've noticed is the examiners actually um, tend to maybe ask all the questions. So they say, hey, you know what? I, I have this. Let me just give all of the, all of the comments. So the comments can actually be ranging from the introduction to the problem statement to the objective, literature review, methodology, everything one shot, right? Now, um, so from an examiner's perspective, that's actually quite easy because you know what? Let me just come in and just let me tell the student whatever, and then I'll move on and I'll give the space to the second examiner. So from an examiner's perspective, it sounds excellent, right? But from a let's take it from a student perspective. If I'm a student, right? And I'm having this examiner telling, taking me from my chapter one right up to my chapter five, if it's a, a viva, right? And then after that, I need to repeat the same process with the second examiner. Can be a bit overwhelming, right? So normally the the good practice, the 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 best practice would actually be you go chapter by chapter, right? So as as a chairperson, it would be good for us to then say, okay, we will do it this way. First examiner, you do chapter one first. Once you're done, I will then invite the second examiner to look at chapter one and then come back, go to chapter two, right? So in that case, from a student perspective, the student has, okay, because the student is already thinking with the first examiner, the student is already thinking, oh, these are my comments about my 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 uh, research objectives, right? This is how I'm defending it. So the mindset is already there, right? It, it sort of makes it more structured in that way. It makes it easier for the student, right? So looking at it from a student perspective, and I think the, the most important person during the session is the student. So I think it's good for the chairperson just to be mindful that we need to take care of how the student is feeling, how the student is responding and so on. Yeah, so Q&A session. My comment, I can comment. Sure. Uh... Sure. Okay. When we okay, refer, uh, just just now when you were saying, uh, say, uh, mm -hmm. the process of getting uh, for the examiner to ask question, if we refer to chapter by chapter, 
That one mm. we we normally refer to the final viva. Whereas for yeah. research proposal, then we mm. have to use a marking rubric as a guide already. Yeah. Otherwise, because inside that we don't have chapter one, two, three for the research correct. proposal. Uh, for correct. the final viva, correct. That's what has been uh, doing. Hmm? Follow yep. research title, abstract, then slowly come in uh, one by one. Correct. So, so Dr. E, the, the other option would be, let's mm. say, um, can actually do, so it's not chapter, then mm. do introduction, do yeah. problem yep. statement, do correct. research objective and research questions. Right? Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, mm. then do literature review, yeah, then yeah. do methodology. Ah, that would be better, that would be yeah. better. Huh? Th th those kind of things, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay. During the Q&A session still? When is it that the chairman or the chairperson should intervene, right? So intervene when necessary, right? So especially when you notice, right, sometimes the discussion uh, can drift into unrelated areas, right? Or if you notice an examiner is actually picking on certain um, very minor details, right? Something like, okay, yes, the student's grammar has not been proofread, right? Okay, it, it's very, very obvious, right? So mention it, the examiner is mentioning it the first time, but the examiner is continuously pull, picking that as a point, right? Or the, you know, it's in, in terms of the citations, ah, you know, got, got no referencing. Ah, you see, again, got no referencing. Ah, you see, again, got no referencing. Things like that, right? So maybe in those kind of things where you can see that, okay, it's noted, right? Yes, referencing is very, very important, right? You might want to intervene and say, okay, uh, noted on the point, okay, the candidate should actually be very mindful that this is a serious problem because, you know, if you don't have your references, your entire basis for what you're saying, right? There, there's, sorry, there's no basis for what you're saying because who is actually supporting what you're saying, right? So the, but you can actually say, okay, this has been noted and let, let's move on. Right, kind of a thing. So if you think there's there's too much where the students is actually being overwhelmed by these kind of things, right? You would want to intervene. Yeah. Um, another thing will also be if an examiner frequently interrupts or do not provide an opportunity for the candidates to respond, right? So meaning that um I'm asking, okay, so I'm saying, okay, you know, this this one, right? Okay, this is not right. Okay, and then Instead of asking a question, asking for clarification, the mm. examiner then proceeds to give his or her opinion only, right? Mm. So maybe in those cases as well. So ask the student the question, the student is not able to answer, provide mm. your feedback, provide the recommendation, right? So mm. that, that is ideally should be how the examiner should do it, yeah? So in this case, if you are a chairperson, maybe you want to sort of guide the examiners, right? To um, gently, of course, it can be, it can be very um, sensitive, right? So we want to do it uh, in a very um, very diplomatic manner as well. Yeah. So interrupt when the examiner has got that kind of tendency. You would want to intervene. Likewise, if the candidate is not responding directly to the question, right? Uh, we have all seen students when they don't know something, right? And they feel like they have to they have to say okay no no this this is right okay they want to show and they'll be actually talking about you know the the examiner is very would sometimes very patiently be asking no you know it's about a right the person the the candidate will actually be talking about z right no x you know like this like this right because very desperately wanting to try to say no 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 i've got this right yeah so even then right you the chairperson can actually intervene and say hey you know what uh, I think this this is the question asked, but you're actually not responding to the question. So, but maybe this is, you're not prepared for this answer, but take it back, right? Sit down with your um, supervisory committee to discuss this matter, right? So to also intervene in that. So intervention when necessary is important because if not, then, you know, the, the Q&A session is going to be like too dragged as well, right? We all mindful that we need to do this within an hour or one and a half hours. So we just have to intervene when it's necessary. Yeah. Moving on. Okay. Wait, uh, another point. Uh. Sure. Uh, 
not only uh, referring to those uh, question asked or the subject matter, then the exact the chairperson need to intervene. I feel that another area I need to um, highlight also. Sometimes mm. as an examiner, mm. we might go overboard. As we mm. ask questions, when we see students are not responding correctly, then from there, we ourselves also get uh, emotionally uh, more or less like upset. And slowly mm -hmm. the tone of voice becomes going up higher and higher. So that becomes a danger. Then the pressure will go to the candidate. So the chairperson should come in to cool down the situation. And we cannot wait until the end, at the end of the session, then we say, oh, just now uh, the whole thing was like in a criminal court. So we are mm -hmm. drilling the student. That is too late already. It should be yeah. during that time. Then it should yeah. come in to help, to help the student. Yeah. Correct, correct. You know, you know, because sometimes you you know that um, you know, but when the students are, are giving an answer, you already know, right? That means the student is not prepared, the student doesn't mm. know how to answer, right? And no matter how how much we grill, right? Like mm. like when you say, right, after you know how much how much you grill, the student is not going to be able to get it. So mm -hmm. I mean what so the whole the whole purpose of a proposal defense is to see or to give feedback to the student in terms correct, of how do you improve correct. on that. Yes. Correct. That's that's a very good point, actually. Mm. Yes. So any anything where you know it's like um things things like heating up, right? That that's a very good this one, right? Things like heating up. Between, mm. ex between examiners or between examiners and candidate as well, mm, right? Mm, it's the mm. role of the chairperson to actually come in and smooth things out, right? Yep, at, yep. at from the beginning itself, right? Yeah. So in, instead of keeping it for the boiling boiling point of, you know, 100, maybe mm. you'd want to step in earlier, yes. Mm, mm, agreed, mm. agreed. <laughs> um, keeping time. So making sure the question is appropriately paced um, and providing equal time for all examiners. So we, we should know that, OK, um, if, if I have an, an hour, uh, then I know that I need to give about half an hour for each of the examiners. OK, um, so if it's half an hour, then, you know, just just do a, a, a mental tabulation or even prior to that. Right. So if you think there's going to be like five sessions, I've got half an hour. Then for each session, I know like there are certain sessions which would need more attention. If let's say, for example, if it's a survivor, then I know that for the chapter on the analysis, I would need to actually give the more time for chapter one, which is in terms of you know setting setting of the the entire uh, research framework. I would need to give more time, right? So, but ensuring that both the examiners or all the examiners are actually having equal time uh, allocated for them. I think that's important, right? And um, if the session is approaching, so if somebody is supposed to be given only about um, 15 minutes for that session, but the person is going on then, you know, gently, okay, so telling up, okay, maybe um, you can you can keep this, right, and bring it up later, or maybe put this in in your report, right? If it's Actually, not not key, right? Maybe just focus on the key questions. This this will be some of the gentle ways of reminding the examiners, right? And set expectation at the start of the session. Like I said, when you start the session, you know you're telling the students during your oral presentation, this is the time allocated. Likewise, at that time, also tell the examiners that you know this is the time. We have one hour, right? So most of most likely both of you would have about half an hour each right to to do the session like right? um expression for for viva right it is always good to um have a look at the because for in the case of a viva the examiner's report will actually come in earlier so as a, as a chairperson it would be actually be good to actually go through the feedback to see if one examiner has actually got more more, pro more things to discuss, right? So to ensure that if you're now giving, so you don't have to give equal time, right? But mm. let's say the first examiner has got more, more important things that the person has highlighted, okay, want to discuss. So you want to give a bit of more time for the, the first examiner compared to the second exam, things like that, right? But and I think, and this is actually key, especially for VIVA, right? Not, not so much for proposal defense, but for VIVA, yeah? So can, this can is on to be done. Sure. Can, uh can we do the same for for the proposal defense, where the chairperson also received the report, at least um, can prepare? 
Okay. The, the same uh, so-called approach. Okay. Can we do it? So for proposal defense, I think currently um, mm. we are not required to submit our our report right. before before and and I think the re the reason being Doctor Oi is the time time which is given. Normally proposal defense, I think you're given about two weeks to prepare, <laughs> right? For for proposal mm. for viva on the other hand, you can actually be given about two two to three months to prepare because of the extensiveness of the whole thing, right? So where the expectation for you to prepare the report given that duration is actually fair, but might not, right? Um, I mean, we all understand that we have all got a lot of things that we are juggling. So might be a challenge, I think, mm. to, to have that earlier. But you know what? And since proposal defense is actually internal, it, you know, I mean, just, just having a, a call and to say, okay, you know, uh, this is the time, you know, would you need more time? I'm just trying to understand, you know, which is good. You can actually just have a conversation as well instead of reading the report. That's possible. Just, yeah. I'm just suggesting a, a work workaround uh, solution actually on this case. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Another, another poll. What the chair should avoid doing during a viva or proposal defense? What the chair should not do? So this this is a um, open short short answer question. So I'll give you a bit of time to scan the code. If anyone have already posted your response, please let me know because I'm not, I don't know whether normally it will appear here, but I don't know whether I need to do something else. Four posted already. Four posted. Mm. Uh, I sent mine also. Ah, legit. I saw uh, it's stated here four posted. Mm -hmm. uh, five posted. I'm how to anyone wants to help me? Changi Changi, go and use Slido now. Don't know how to 
show the hmm. antique pole results. Macam mana? <laughs> hmm. Anyone can help me with this? Let me see if I can go in. Not able to see as well. Okay, sorry. Um, apologies. It appears I have used the wrong tool. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to project. Um, Doctor Soti, can you download yes. it? Download up. Uh? Uh, download from the response. Maybe you can download it and can project it after that. Okay. Uh, good question. Huh? So I'm wondering how to download. <laughs> okay, tapa. Okay. Hmm. I will. I will try to figure this out. Okay, but. Dr. Okay, Sotay, why don't, why don't we just type in the chat box? Sure. Okay, but maybe, maybe why, why don't you all just share? Those of you who have given your opinion, why, why don't you all tell me what, what, what's happening? Tell us. Okay, I'll start first. Sure. Don't challenge or question the examiner. Don't challenge or question the examiner. Wow, uh. okay. Don't challenge, okay. Uh. Okay. Or question the examiner. Okay. Um, during a viva, correct? Yes. During yes. A viva. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Agree. Agree. Uh, uh, don't don't question or challenge because uh, the student is there, mm. the candidate is there, right? Mm. You will affect the credibility of the examiner if you do so. But mm. but moderate the session in a different way right yep. means don't outright challenge a question nope. right okay right yeah okay good point okay who else yeah i probably put it in a slightly different way i would say that stay objective at all time uh, do not mm -hmm. cite uh, with any of the examiner yes very 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 important right um don't cite with the examiners. Also, don't cite with the students, right? Uh, because you would need to. Let me let me go. Doctor Young, maybe yeah. I heard wrongly. I thought you are saying uh, don't fight or not cite. That old man, uh, maybe sometimes. I, I uh, think I think you need a new hearing aid. <laughs> 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 okay, my apology. <laughs> Act independently, avoid conflict, and be fair and square. Be neutral and give constructive feedback. Very, very true. Very true. So, let me go back to lecture. Okay. Anyone else? Ask candidate questions that are seeking clarification. Don't antagonize the candidate. Yes. Yeah. And and I think um, I think all of us have been in that situation, right? Um, I I I I still remember when I went for my viva, and um, I, I had a wonderful supervisor, right? And I remember this was uh, Prof Musafa. Prof Musafa was there, right? And I was like, okay, just sitting down there, and, and you know, it's like, and then he's saying, don't worry, everything be fine, right? And then. When and, and mine was at like a physical session, right? So he was like just sitting across me, and then you know, whenever I couldn't, I would just look at him, and then he would just smile, and then he would just nod, like you know, calm yourself down. You know, like so we have all been in that situation. So, yes, I think at the end of the day, don't antagonize the candidate, give the candidates an opportunity. And 
maybe when we are communicating our feedback, we just want to be just mindful that, hey, you know what? They are all on this journey to learn, right? So yeah, good, good point, good point. Very true, Jason. Yeah. Murina, you want to share? Yeah, sorry, Dr. Soti. <laughs> um, yeah, um, uh, you do, don't, don't usually, um, what I, I experience is that um, the chairman would uh, give comment on the thesis to the candidate instead of, you know, being fair and just asking clarification and all that, but zoom into just commenting what you should be doing, what you should not be doing. They should avoid that. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Going to. Okay. So I'm going to go to my slide. Okay. And. Yes, Munura, I, I, I actually align with what, what, what you are saying. So do not engage in academic questioning because that's not the role of the uh, chair, right? So the chair is supposed to moderate. Okay. Now, having said that, in the sessions that I have been a chairperson, unfortunately, I have not been able to not give my view, right? I have actually broken this rule, right? I have... Um, given comments in terms of the, the feedback and so on. Um, because I, they, there were like some additional points that I wanted to put in. So I have done this, right? So I'm actually very mindful. So as a chairperson, I think you'd also want to um, look at it in an objective way, right? So rule is do not engage in academic questioning. However, if you feel like there are some important points that the examiners have not raised and you think that these points will be useful and helpful for the students and you want to just prompt it and you want to just let the, let the uh, student know, right, then I think you should, right? So as a chairperson, you can actually uh, moderate it. However, don't, if the examiners have actually asked everything, have highlighted everything, don't go in and say, oh, okay, right? This, this, this. So maybe we should avoid doing that. So this I, I like, is, I, yes. I like, the comment, I like the commandment by Ng Ying Ying. Huh? Hmm. Remain impartial and avoid favoring anyone, including those with title. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I like that. I totally agree with this. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think as a chairperson, um, you see that, so that is why. So normally we would face a, a challenge, especially when we have like professors sitting mm. in, right? Mm. Right. So sometimes, you know, given given their their seniority, given I mean, in order for them to have got their professorship, they they would have gone through that entire thing. So especially come to research, right? You know that they are sort of an authority in that area. So we we need to be I think find a balance uh, giving giving due uh, recognition appreciation for what they bring to the table but however we we'll also need to be finding a, a fine balance to ensure that you're you're not appearing um, impart you, you need to be impartial right mm. then you're not favoring one one mm. person yeah that, that's actually very very important good point mm. very good mm. point actually so. So avoid avoid doing so. I'm I'm still learning. Yeah, I'm I'm putting I'm putting this like a big time. This one I'm putting this, and I'm actually not practicing this. So I'm I'm actually been very very open with you guys on that. So <laughs> yes, working on this still. <laughs> Doctor Soti, okay. yes. I uh, just mean here. Just want I just to seek clarification from you, right? Because just now you did highlight the issue is that right under certain circumstances, so the chairperson, right, when you observe that some of those key area is not being addressed by the examiner, right? So in this case, the chairperson will come in to raise the concern. So my question is that right in this case, uh, student, do they need to address this thing in their correction report? 
because normally in a correction report, they will only address the concern that is raised by the examiner, but not from the chairperson, right? So in this case, how to deal with this, uh, this situation? Okay. Um, you see, so when, when I was the chairperson, uh, when I had actually brought up some of these points, I was um, sharing this with the hope that the examiners would be able to pick this up and put, put it in, yeah? So I think um, if this is actually key and it's not been included, when the report is being uh, prepared, the chairperson actually signs off finally, right? So if you think that this needs to be included, the chairperson can then uh, reach out to the examiners, right? Or to BGRC to say, okay, can this, this also be included? Yeah, the chairperson can do it that way. I think that's that will be the the way. So so sometimes um, when the examiners are asking the question, right? Sometimes when the examiners are asking the question, at that point they might not be might not have picked it up and asked it, asked the, those areas. So the chairman might feel like, oh, this this has been left out. This needs to be highlighted. But let's say when the report comes out. The examiners have already included that then. Then you can actually just let it go, right? But if the chairperson feels that, no, this, this is something important that needs to be included, right? The, ch the chairperson cannot, of course, cannot uh, provide those, but can reach out to the examiners to say, okay, will it be possible to include this in? So that can be done. My opinion, uh, uh, Dr. Sorti, sure. uh, for the entire session, actually we should take it in a very open uh, open mind concept, saying that if the chairperson were to take the trouble to come out with a comment, not only the examiner, your examiner uh, don't add in, the supervisor concern, they, they are taking notes. So the, the section here, I like say for proposal defense, is to help the student to improve. Why not? There is an extra opinion somewhere, then yeah. their supervisor also can take note. Yes, hmm? yes. But I, but I think Jasmine's, uh, Dr. Jasmine's question is... Um, to address the report. Uh, to address, yes, whether, yeah. you know, whether the students will actually be addressing addressing that or not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if there is a disagreement, okay. So disagreement between mm. examiners. Okay. Mm. So I think that this was the question that we had earlier, right? So yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think first we need to mediate, right? Um, and I think um, disagreement. We, we, the guiding principle, right, um, mm. would simply be what is the issue that is being raised, right? So I think mm. as long as it is based, it is looked at it objectively, right? So mm -hmm. if mm. we can actually, and here the chairperson would most likely need to look at it and say, okay, so when when is this happening? If the disagreement is happening during the Q&A session, it's mm. very, very important to actually quickly uh, close this, right? Any, any disagreement, I think, should not go for more than three or four minutes, right? If there is a disagreement, right? So first try to mediate. So, you know, just say, oh, okay, right, this, this is an opinion, right? So uh, there, there might be different schools of thoughts. Maybe we can look at it from here. Try to mediate first. But if you feel like, you know, okay, both are very strong. And so then say, can we now take this during deliberation, right? Avoid doing, avoid any extensive discussion in front of the candidate, right? Because I think we, we just need to be very mindful that the student is forming impressions, right, uh, during during the entire period. And you must understand that the student is in a very um, vulnerable position because, you know, I am, I need to graduate, right? So look, the, the examiners are having an argument. Okay, one is saying this, one is, who is right? Or what's going to happen? How are they going to grade me? Okay, you don't want to put the student in that position, right? So whatever is it, I think... The chairperson should actually come in, right? Mediate. Like I said, it shouldn't go more than five minutes, right? It should be stopped, right? Within four or five minutes, if you're going more than five minutes, be very firm and say, okay, thank you. I've noticed that there is a disagreement. Let's agree to disagree and let's take this um, 
let's take this during deliberation. We will talk about it during deliberation. That's it, right? So you can actually do this during the, if it's happening during the viva or the proposal defense, do this. Do not do not discuss this in front of a student. Yeah. Um, agreed, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Du during the discussion, there shouldn't be this uh, argument or so-called disagreement in front of student. Hmm? Correct. But, but the earlier point I brought up was uh, is after. 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 Okay. Mm. So let's say during the deliberation process, right? Okay. Mm, so, mm. okay. So during the deliberation process, mm. in this case, you see, if there's going to be a, a disagreement, it will mm. be whether <clears throat> it's a past, clear past, it's a minor, major, mm. right? Mm. This will be the discussion, right? But mm. again, mm. if let's say, for example, we go back to the, the core reason of, okay, so in this case, okay. So let's say, for example, the examiner feels, that one of the examiner feels, okay, you know what? The, there is actually no problem, right? Mm. The, the mm. person is actually doing a study where, right, by the time the, the, the person completes, that is now going to take about another three years for the, the student to complete. And by mm. that time, that, that topic is not going to be relevant anymore, right? So this mm. is actually not it shouldn't, right? That, so that the, we should not actually allow the student to do this, right? We should actually get the student to change, whatever, right? So let's let's look at it. That means I think it needs to be looked at it in a very rational way. Okay. So listen to listen to both sides, right? So it cannot be that it's based on emotions, right? Mm. Hear hear both of them out. So yes, at the end of the day, the decision because. There, are, there will be three. That means, including the chairperson, there is three, three people. So mm. the chairperson will now need to decide who mm. am I going to support, mm. right? Am I going to support the first examiner or the second examiner? And the decision to support, again, cannot be based on personal biases, right? Mm. It has to be based on justification, right? Mm. So mm. if you tell me that, okay, look, this, this is not going to be something that, you know, is, which is going to be there. This problem is not going to be there, right? Mm. So, makes sense. Then you said, okay, yes, right? So, we will most likely need to give this as a major amendment for the students to make. So, I think how, how we mediate this, as long as our fundamentals are right, right? We go back to, it's not based on uh, people, it's mm. not based on biases, but mm. it is based on justification, right? Okay. So if, let's say, for example, right, during the session, so like I'm saying, most of the time we will come, right? But let's say this is both, both your examiners very strong-headed says no, right? Mm. So give your examiners time and say, you know what? Why don't you all go back, right? Come, come back and say, what is the justification? So your justification now needs to be supported by go find research for me and say, okay, no, this, this is it, right? So then make a decision. So in that, so this I'm saying 99.9% .9 of the time, you should be able to solve it, right? Based on this discussion, but really cannot, right? This is like one of those real, very strongly believing in what they are saying. Then ask them to go come back with the justification. Sit down. Right, have another session, maybe have an, an a one hour session, have a discussion, say, okay, this is what, this is what, and then as a chairperson, then you can actually decide. So I think it's, you know, it, all of these things are actually uh, a case by case, right? You There is no like one right answer, but mm. I, I feel like at the end of the day, if we go back to our fundamentals, saying that it's based on rational justification, supported by evidence mm. that's where how the decision is made i don't think we can go wrong in that mm -hmm. yeah so for this point eh, it goes back to your first question say, mm. is it the chairperson's responsibility to review or to read the report so it goes back to that eh? without good understanding so it's not easy for the chairperson to make decision already so Correct. you'll be depending on how strong, how good is the argument inside in uh, during the viva. So you can be uh, in a way influenced somewhere. Already. So that's Correct. a danger. So that's why I supported with the statement saying that it is the responsibility of the chairperson to review, to read. Uh, you must understand. 
Uh, so Correct. I go back to this uh, because of this uh, policy. Hmm? So so reviewing that reviewing the thesis is actually key. Mm. You cannot you cannot actually just base it on the oral presentation. Correct. Oral Correct. Presentation. You cannot do that. Yes. Mm. Yes. I hope I've answered this this question which was raised. I think Dr. Yong also had brought it up. So I mm. hope I was able to able to address this. Mm. Not only you address the issue, uh, Dr. Soti, it's the understanding among us. Uh, understanding among us, uh, we are going to face one another. One way or another, uh, say you become chairperson, you become the examiner, and then from there you can see that this disagreement coming in already. Yeah. That's a danger. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. And and I think like, you know, as long as we we keep in mind that okay, this is actually, I mean, at the end of the day, it's nothing personal. Because mm. I think at the end of the day, we have the students' best interest, right? right we are right. here to to ensure that the student gets the best outcome. Mm, mm. So if we keep that in mind, I don't think we can go wrong. Yes. Mm, mm. So after after the the Q and A, right? Closing the session. So give a final opportunity for questions or clarifications, if any, right? And then explain to the candidates on what is the next step, right? So tell the students the, the feedback session has been over, right? So this will now be, um, we will ask the candidate to leave the room, right? And then the examiners will deliver Sophia. it. Okay, yes. Sophia, sorry to yes. interrupt. We don't see your slide. Oh, okay. One mm. minute. Huh? And see? Not yet. Not, not yet, yet, not yet. Not yet, okay. No, not yet. Not yet. Still in the air. Okay. <laughs> okay, one minute. Let me, let me maybe stop sharing and then share again. One okay. minute. Well, not sharing. Yeah, good. Yes, okay. Now we can see. All right. Okay. So uh, this is still during the Q&A session. So final opportunity for questions or clarification, right? So and so for questions, uh, clarification, you can actually open it up both to the student as well as to the examiners, right? To ask them anything else. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then explain to the candidate on the next step. So you know, tell tell him or her that you know you'll be leaving the room now or exiting the online meeting. We will go. We'll deliberate. We will come back after that, right? We will come back and then we will tell you the the outcome of it, right? And tell the candidate to be on standby. So normally it will be the if it's PGRC, PGRC will call the student back. Or most of the time it's the examiners who reach out to the student and say, okay, you're ready. You can come back. Right, so uh, just a point, um, and and I've actually noticed uh, Jasmine do this, right? So she's like, you know, like so we'll be all very gung ho. We want to talk about it, right? Then she'll say, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let, let me stop the recording, right? So uh, if you don't have Jasmine in the room at that point, so remember to stop the recording before starting the deliberation process. Yeah, so this will be the uh, for the Q and A session. Okay, deliberation process. Okay. So we, we will have um, different scenarios during the deliberation process, right? So um, we will have dominators. So dominators would be sometimes there are certain examiners who will, you know, um, put forth their views and their opinions, right? So, and uh, if you don't, okay, so if one examiner is dominant, the other examiner is okay, Right then, most likely the dominant examiner will sort of get his or her um, outcome, right? And then the other examiner will say, "Okay, okay, doesn't matter." So what what you would want to do is you would want to ensure that you're giving both examiners equal airtime, right? You would want to probe. So if someone, if one examiner is taking a long time, give that person time 
to uh, voice out and you know the reason why they're choosing a particular recommending a particular decision give the person time to explain right and then give equal amount of time to the next person so normally dominators characters would be they will start sort of like um come in and give their opinion when the other person is ready. so you, here you would need to manage dominating characters as well right so you will need to say oh, okay Thank you. You've already said maybe let's let's listen to to the other person, right? Uh, of course, then there are the long long winded uh, examiners as well, right? So they they would most likely talk about a lot of other things, right? So but and then so you would now most likely want to come back. So you know so and this is where uh, the note taking is actually very very important, right? So. You will have your core issues. You know what are the core issues that you want to discuss. You know where are the problems that has already been discussed. So you put it down in point four, right? So then you would want to bring back. Then you say, okay, good, right? So if the person is talking about, yeah, citation not there, referencing not there, okay, grammar and all of those things, then you say, okay, agree? But let, let's come back. Let's come back to core research issues. It has that been addressed, right? So you want to bring back based on that. Okay, then, then we have the, the careless uh, people as well, right? Not careless, but careless. These are like, yeah, whatever, la. okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have, you, have, you have examiners like that as well, right? So with the careless as well, you would need to do a bit more probing. So if the careless would say, okay, uh, okay I, I agree with whatever, but so then you say, okay, so why, why, why would you decide, or, you know, what's, what's your view, what's your reasons, right? So maybe a little bit more probing would be necessary, yeah? Managing conflicts, I think we have discussed this already, a constructive discussion, based on rational outcomes, right? Most of the time we cannot go wrong when we, when we do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, final decision, always, conclude by confirming so conclude by saying okay uh um examiner a okay doctor do, do, do. are you saying this okay so doctor this has said this right um doctor b okay you have said this okay concluding that this is the decision and so we're going to communicate so this is a decision so always conclude the session by conclude the deliberation process by confirming with all, all parties which are present as well, yeah? Um, one of the things, and, and, and this is actually quite unique to UOW, is that we actually allow the um, supervisors to actually sit in in the deliberation process, right? Uh, normally in other, other institutions, or even when I went for my PhD, my supervisor was actually sitting outside with me, right? So. Um, which, which is actually unique. So in this case, um, rightfully, the supervisor, um, examiners, or the chair, chairperson can actually uh, seek clarification from the supervisor if need be, right? But of course, the supervisor does not have a say in the final decision which will be coming up, right? And and I think um, the examiners as well. Okay, I think we as examiners need to keep in mind that. Our obligation is just to the students. We mm. want to do what's best for the students, right? Mm. We need not do anything. Okay, so the, the supervisor might be my good friend, right? But that does not mean I need to now uh, give a give a outcome which will satisfy my friend, the supervisor. I, I need not I need not think like that, right? Because mm. at the end of the day, if I'm going to do this at a proposal defense, I am doing an injustice to the student, mm, mm. right? So mm. just, 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 I think we just need to be uh, mindful of, of some, somewhat, like I said, these are fundamentals, right? Because at the end of the day, it's not about people, it's about an issue that we are addressing, mm, yeah? Mm, mm. So I think as long as we keep that in mind, we cannot go wrong, yeah? <clears throat> Concluding session, communicate the outcome after the deliberation session, and uh, don't forget to congratulate. I, I always forget to congratulate, so I'm putting this down, <laughs> okay? So say congratulations, right? Well done, and then communicate the outcome. Mm. Thank the examiners for their time, and then pass the session over to the facilitators to follow up. 
right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this will be during the Vaibha, yeah? Now, after Vaibha. So after the Vaibha or proposal defense. Okay. So Jasmine will normally- Dr. Dr. Sophie, before, yes. before we actually go into this like after the Vaibha, Mm. Uh, can, can can I just uh, yeah just fall back a little bit on this uh, previous slide uh, during the Wi-Fi itself that mm. uh, during the de uh, deliberations uh, what's the role of the supervisor do you do you involve the supervisors or, or not or they just uh, continue to uh, to be there as an observer? Actually, yeah, uh, Dr. Young, rightfully, um, if you ask me, I don't think the supervisor should be there um, during deliberation. During deliberation. Right, so actually, uh, that, that's what I'm saying. Based on the past experiences that I have had, and even my own uh, uh, viva, my supervisor was actually sitting outside. My my supervisor was not in. Right, so meaning, and and I'm from a local university. Right, um, even even in when external examiners, right, even in my previous organization as well, uh, supervisors do not go in. Right. Because I but, think the deliberation process itself um, might would be uh, it, like I said, right? I mean, if the supervisor is in and the supervisor, and you see, like uh, who actually nominates the supervisor? The supervisor is actually nominated, but sorry, the examiners are actually nominated by the supervisor, right? So these are my friends. Right. So, you know, and so I, I would have most likely called him up and say, oh, OK, right. Um, you know, this my student is going, you know, will it be possible for you to be? Right. So when if I'm as a supervisor, I'm going to sit in in the deliberation process, I might, you know, even if I'm not going to say anything, right, my my friend might think, oh, OK, I've been invited by, you know, by her and then I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. Right. I should be very mindful. So you don't want to put the examiner or the supervisor in 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 a in a in a particular dilemma like that right so if you ask me i would say supervisor should not be in the deliberation process at all because whatever that the ex, whatever the examiner needs to know or the chairman needs to know the student would have uh, provided that it must be in the report if it's not in the report what what why why would we right it's 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 not important. If it's not in the report, it's not important, right? So, however, in in our case, we have the supervisor sitting in, right? So, um, supervisor can okay. So, like like for example, when I have the supervisor, one one of the things that as a chairperson, I would ask the supervisor is, look, this this is a, a minor correction. We are giving a minor correction. However, um, there is quite a bit of things to do. Do you think three months would be enough? Do you think maybe we should put it as a major? Right? Would that be better? You know, those kind of things is what I what we would ask, right? But no other input should actually come from the supervisor at this point. My my humble opinion. Yeah, I, I guess the the practice varies from uh, institute to institution. The institutions where I got uh, my. Uh, post grad, uh, my uh, doctorate title from, uh, they also practice, uh, you know, that uh, the supervisors are present, or rather, they, in, in my case, that the supervisor is present uh, mm. during the time when the deliberations uh, went. Mm. Um, but I say there are pros and cons, but in our case, there we also practice the same as well, which means to say that the, pres the supervisors are invited uh, to be in the deliberation sessions while, while it's going on. Um, you know, as far as, far as the uh, outcome of the sessions is concerned, ultimately the supervisor will know about it and whether the student passed or, uh, or or failed or passed with major corrections or minor corrections or whatnot. Uh, but but I, I guess you know the 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 fact that you know if the supervisor is in the room, then obviously the advantage of that is that uh, he would probably understand the uh, deliberations process better. Uh, to know, you know what was being discussed and how uh, was the conclusion came about you know, as a result of the pro and cons that was de deliberated in the room itself. I, I guess that that would probably, you know, uh, at, at the same time, uh, allows the supervisor uh, to then uh, discuss, have a better discussion with the student in terms of, you know, what are the areas of concern that was uh, actually mentioned in the room itself. 
Whereas on the other hand, you know, again, the, the con here is that, you know, because of the deliberations has to be made, and sometimes it sways uh, the emotion of the supervisor so much so that, you know, the supervisors will uh, hold that, that sort of a, uh, uh, vengeance, I would say, you know, that eventually... Grudge, grudge you know, maybe. <laughs> yes. Correct, correct. Right, yeah. the grudge, the grudge <laughs> against certain individuals, even though they're their friends. Uh, and that could lead on to some, you know, future consequences as a result of that. So again, there are pro and cons uh, towards yeah. both that end. But in our practice there, yeah, you know, we do invite uh, the, the supervisor in the room. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's also our practice so far, up to today, as far as I know, uh, that supervisor have also been um, been invited to uh, give their their input uh, on the process after the deliberation itself. What would be your thought in that? Mm. Actually, I would think that um, input from the supervisor at that point is not necessary um, because I think. Um, it, it should be an independent independent process uh, for the examiners to actually decide. So, you know, it's like it shouldn't be if even if the examiner, sorry, if the supervisor is giving an input, it should not be on content related matters. Right. So the examiner should not, sorry, the supervisor should not say, you know, actually it's the framework is like this, like this. You no, know, this, this is what the, the, the student was trying to say, right? The supervisor should not say that because the student has been given the time, the platform to actually explain, and the student was not able to do that, right? And hence why there was this query coming up. So, however, in terms of post, that means in terms of how the student is going to manage this. Uh, those kind of things that means in terms of okay how well prepared is the student right how challenging is this going to be for the student right from a student perspective yes that that kind of input can come in but the the decision in terms of the final decision to influence the final decision should not be from the supervisor that's i mean th that that's my opinion actually yeah. So, uh, so again, just just a step on. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, just just a step on on uh, just what you just said, uh, Dr. Sophie. Now, hmm. uh, what what uh, would would uh, your opinion be the same uh, hmm. for students who do not have very strong uh, grabs of the language uh, during the viva sessions, that the supervisor steps in to clarify, you know, some of the uh, communication that could be misunderstood as a result. Hmm. That's a that's a that's actually a difficult question to answer. Um, Dr. Young, let's say this is a proposal defense and it is something which is done internally. Yeah. Mm. So so yeah. it's okay. I mean, internally, uh, if the student is not able to, you know, the supervisor is actually going to come and explain something, then it then mm. it's okay. But what's going to happen during Viva if you have got externals, right? And I mean, especially if you have got uh, international and you know external, uh, foreign, external, local, right? And so again, it it um, the kind of uh, impression that that's going to be formed, right? If if a student is not able to articulate their findings, right? Their research, the, the research that they have put, so they have spent most likely about three to four years on that, and they're unable to articulate. <clears throat> it's a reflection, um, not only on the students, it's also a reflection on, on all of us, actually, right? So, and I think um, doing, having one practice during proposal defense and um, not having something similar during the Viva, uh, would not be fair to the student. I mean, I'm, I like I said, right? I'm I'm actually just looking at it from what's best for the student, right? Mm. So uh, the student most likely, <clears throat> I I have um, got I I have actually supervised a number of students from China. I have right, and I know language is a problem. So one of the but you know one of the things with with our students from China is you know they're actually very good at memorizing. Right mm. and um, 
when they have actually memorized something, they will actually be able to present. So with my students, what, what I actually do is I have got many, many, many mock sessions. Like it's very time consuming for me, but um, I have I have a student who's going for Viva, right? Um, I actually sit down on, on weekends. I actually sit down with the student for about an hour and I'll say, okay, present to me, present, right? And then after that, same thing again, again. I, I actually make the student present over and over again just to prep the student, right? So it's time consuming on our part, no doubt. You, you need to put that, invest that time, but I think that's that's the only way. Um, because if, if, let's say for example, we, we step in as a supervisor to explain, then that's not the student's work already anymore, right? It reflects badly on the student. So and this is again my personal opinion, um, but I feel like we should be consistent whether it's proposal defense or viva, right? Um, because it is a platform where the students are being tested on their caliber, right? On, on the, their ability to deliver. Yeah, no, I, I I do I completely agree with you in terms of the uh, you know the rehearsal that requires be done and requires to be put in in prior to the presentation itself, but mm. it is it is not the presentations per se. It is the Q and A sessions, mm. and and that's where the struggle big time. Mm. Yeah. So so Doctor Young, you know what I I actually get um like so like we we have like a committee. So for this particular student, we actually have got there are three of us. <clears throat> So, um, so the three of us actually sit down and we'll ask, we'll ask questions, get the student to answer, right? Um, wh when I know uh, students are really weak, what I actually do is I actually bring in uh, some of my friends, right? I actually bring them in and I say, okay, sit down and ask, right? This, I mean, so of course, then I would have to reciprocate <laughs> in kind. I mean, when, when they have got something, I, I will do that for them as well. But, you know, the, you, you have to even even uh, this one. So you actually um, prepare them in terms of what are what are the questions, because mm. right? you know, like when you look at it, you know, okay. So this 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 type of question is going to come up, right? So you, you sort of like prep them uh, really really well for the process, right? Like I know like this this particular student because uh, there is this thing known as um, thesis completion seminar, right? So when the student actually went, because we are like. We have given so many sessions, you know, that, and so when the examiners actually came, the examiners were asking questions, you know, they were asking the same question. And then like, so then suddenly this examiner was asking like something totally out, right? Not, not even related, like, you know, like from perspective of why don't you use this particular theory? Then, you know, she was like, oh, right. You could see like she decided, right? Then, of course, the chair, chairperson then said, oh, okay, like, you know, you cannot ask that kind of questions now because, you know, already this is completion seminar. You cannot be asking those kind of questions, right? But, you know, so, like, I, I think, yes, what they, I, I think we cannot, like, 100% prepare them, but at least maybe 75, 80%, right? Because we, we sort of have an idea on the kind of questions which will come up, right? Being mm -hmm. examiners ourselves, we know, like, oh, this this is this is the focus area. This is the type of questions which will be coming up. And to answer that, yes. So, on this point, uh, Dr. Soti, mm. you said uh, we normally also we also go through a lot of uh, rehearsal, trying to spot certain question that um, that is going to come out. Then we prepare the student. Okay, my question mm. now coming in is mm. knowing very well China student and come to oral, uh, come to argument or so called um, to to answer to the question. They might not be able to do it uh, freely. Yes? Do you allow them to read from their so-called prepared notes? Since we are preparing them, already, the possible question, it really come out, a question, uh, the answer will be there. Do you allow them to read from the notes? I actually, you see, uh, that that's the that's the beauty of an online online presentation, right? So like like so like for this particular student. Mm. I mm. actually told her, I said, okay, you go, you have you have that as a Word document, you have with that. <clears throat> so mm. you know that, you know, if this question is coming up, you know, and you know, so if you need to read from that, read from that. Mm. Okay. But then, you know, you just have to, sometimes, sometimes examiners can pick up, right? But you don't want to make it too obvious. But you see, and the, the good thing about this is when you have that many practice sessions, right? The students like, and, and that's what I'm saying, the Chinese students, their memory is very good, 
that they can <laughs> memorize things very well, right? And so they are able to, they, they will be able to say it, right? But yes, I like like for my for my this student, I actually tell her, prepare something in, in a Word document and have it there, right? Mm. So that you can mm. actually just refer. When you need mm. to know, you just refer, right? And I said, okay, but make sure like, you know, like your eyes and all how, you know, it, it's to that extent that, that you would go and do the coaching. I mean, this is the reality of the mental law, right? So, yes. That, that that's a very good point. That's a very good point. That we should allow, we are knowing very well, uh, they can't really argue or so-called uh, answer to your question. Sometimes uh, to understand the question also already uh, an issue. Right? More so now they have the answer, then we don't allow them to read from there, then yeah. what, would, what would happen? They'll get panic, panic, <laughs> then the subsequent question is going to come in, sure, haywire already. Yeah, yeah. And just prepping them, lot of doing. Just mm. prepping them as as much. I mean that as supervisors, I think that's what we can do actually do. Yes. It's a good good discussion. I, so I I don't have. I'm I'm just sharing on some of the um, practices that I do. I, I can only share on that. But I don't know. I don't know what's right. But I as long as and I feel like you know if you're able to just guide the students to a certain extent, right? Um, so. I don't know. I mean, the sort sort of giving them the float, right? Instead of just have, throwing them in the deep end of the pool, but just giving them a bit of a like a float at least mm. to take them because you can't be there holding their hands at that point. So, but at least these are some of the things we can do. Yeah. To to add in uh, to what just now, uh, Doctor Yong, and what you have said. Uh, in addition to that, I have um, another concern, or so called another opinion, uh, saying that. Uh, to allow the supervisor to come in uh, during during the deliberation uh, process of time mm. to say something that is able to help the student. Man, knowing very well China student communication already an issue. Plus mm. also, uh, I remember the session that we had with Professor Grace and Dr. Horn at one time, uh, mm. a few years ago, they were saying, they were reminding us, saying that, since you have experienced a bad time during your so-called uh, viva or your research proposal the, from the other university, they will grill and drill the student up to a level the student lost confidence during that session. So they said we should avoid doing all this. So knowing very well, student cannot answer. If the question mm. were to come in one after the other, uh, student mm. get panicked. So isn't mm. that is important for the supervisor to help during deliberation. Now they know the student has prepared. Maybe they could not address the issue at that time. So mm -hmm. I feel that we should consider those uh, opinion from the supervisor. Therefore, the examiner should consider because sometimes it is not fair and not fair for the students and then judging them based on the one hour they say, oh, they, they don't know they are, what they are doing. Then the conclusion <laughs> comes in already. But Dr. Oi, you see, uh, so mm. that's that's where the the proposal, the, the the proposal or the thesis that they have submitted would come in because mm. the examiners are not actually basing it on the one hour session only. They're mm. actually basing it on the report which has been given, right? So if even after that, there are like the will say if during during the during the deliberation process, right? Um if it is clear, right, if, you know, that um, maybe that the student was not able to articulate it, yes, mm -hmm. but I think examiners are also uh, conscious of the fact, okay, no, it's actually in, in, in this year it is there, right, but, they, but even if their write-up is not clear, that means then the students themselves are not sure of what, what, what they're talking about or what they are actually proposing, yeah, so in those cases, if the supervisor is going to come in and explain, right? So your your justification is the student is not able to articulate, right? Mm. That means orally he's not able to articulate, but fine. But wouldn't that need to be there in the report, right? That means the examiner must have read the report and found that the, what is in the report is inadequate, right? Okay. So, so in those cases, I, th this why irrespective. So it's like, oh, if for the for the supervisor to say, no, this is actually what the student meant. I, I don't think there's grounds for that. I don't, okay. Again, this is my opinion though, yeah? <laughs> okay, on this point, eh? so I, I bring up uh, another issue. Eh, in that 
in our policy for Yolo mm. Bill, mm. oral presentation and report evaluation carry mm. the same weightage 50 50. So we are mm. saying if the report is well done, but during mm. Viva, during the oral presentation, student was not able uh, to articulate or to answer correctly, mm. then the examiner will base on the Q&A saying that you can't even answer my question. Therefore, the markdown. Then from there, if the danger will be there, there because of the 50-50% uh, weightage there. So right. that's a disadvantage. Yeah, but, but Dr. Yi, normally, right, when during the deliberation process, if you remember, mm. the, our decision on whether to give a minor or a major or a fail mm. is actually based on, I mean, that this one. So we are actually not so much looking at the rubrics. I mean, later when you're, when you're going down and you're, you're putting down the marks, then yes. But at that point, you see, you will already have an idea of how, how the student has actually performed. Yeah. So... The deliberation process is actually based on, okay, so this, this is what I have read mm. and this is what the student have presented. And based on that, I mm. want to say, okay, is the student good enough to continue on this journey, right? Mm. Or do we need to tell the student, no, just revisit your topics, right? That's what you want to say, right? And I, I, I don't think you're going to come to uh, an agreement on what, what is best, right? But... Mm. I feel like uh, based on um, good practices, mm. right? The PhD journey is a student's journey, okay. right? Uh, we support, we as supervisors support, but at the end of the day, they need to defend their work, right? Okay. So yes, understand they're not unable to defend it orally sometimes. Yes, we mm. support mm. where we can, but... I think there can never be an excuse in terms of why their written report is not up to mark or how it's why it's not clearly stated there. Right? So I don't know. So I, I think I, I don't think you're gonna come come to an agreement, right? So I, I think in terms of if, if you are a chairman at, at, at a particular session and you feel that you want to allow the supervisors to give their input by all means. I, and I don't think there is a, any clear guidelines as well, right? So in the absence of a guideline, we'll just follow best practices, right? Mm. So, okay. I, I I think I think we we're not going to come come to a conclusion on this. So yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I, yeah. I guess I guess the uh, Dr. Uish question is irrelevant in the first place because we are no longer looking at the, at the marks. So yeah. uh, Dr. Oi, don't ask those kind of questions where it's no longer regular. Right? No, not true. <laughs> no, not 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 true. Okay, because anyway, somehow just, it's okay. It's okay. Mm. I was just mm. joking. I wanted to mm. ask uh, Dr. Sorty another question. Yeah, yeah, okay, mm. yeah, okay. Uh, mm. Dr. Sorty, what's what's your opinion of a chair if uh, the examiner would ask uh, the students uh, questions that are re relating to theory, uh, general uh, research theory that has nothing to do with the dissertation. Do you allow? Do you allow the examiners to uh, to do that, or just to focus on the dissertation? Um, actually, uh, Dr. Yang, it actually depends. Um, if the examiner is actually bringing up a particular theory, the theory. Uh, in in the mind of the examiner, most likely that particular theory is at is actually important um, to support the framework. I'm assuming, right? Um, so what what about uh, theories? There's nothing to do. There's not relevant to uh, you know to whatever that this student is studying. Yes. Then 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 for sure the chair the chairperson should then uh, intervene and say, okay, uh, no, maybe this is not, this is not this is not relevant. So it's like, you know, like when when you should intervene as a chairperson, this would be one of the instances that you should do that, right? Um, but, if, but you know, again, uh, Dr. Young, there, there is a challenge in that as well. Okay, so let's say um, my background is economics, right? Um, if I'm sitting in for a marketing uh, dissertation, I'm, I'm chairing a marketing dissertation, I would not know whether it's relevant or not. That's that's the other yeah. thing, right? But let's say if this is my area and I know for sure that, you know, this is actually not, then by all means, intervene. Okay. Should intervene, yes. Okay, okay, I got that. Uh, okay. Thanks, thanks, Lotus. Uh, Dr. Soti, 
Yes. Just mean here, I just want to hijack. Huh? Okay, ah. uh, Doctor, we just want to clarify to, uh, the point that you raised, right? Uh, actually, uh, what Dr. Yong said is true. We are no longer basing said that, right? The presentation and also the report is actually carry 50-50% wattage. This thing doesn't uh, apply anymore. So it's solely based on what Dr. Soti has said. Okay, it's actually just based on the verdict, whether it's uh, acceptable, whether it's minor or major. We don't actually looking into the marks anymore. All right. If, okay. if you were to say this way, then we should uh, we should not use the rubric during the oral order to go and mark or mark for what? We are wasting time also. If you say we are not using that as a guide, then we should not use it at all. Dr. Yong, sorry, Dr. Wei. Mm. We, we, we take this offline. We discuss later. Okay. <laughs> Thank mm. you. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. now the chair has to step in, Dr. Wei. Yep, yep. <laughs> the chair has to step in now. But, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Noted, noted. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Jasmine. Okay. So after the Bible or proposal defense, review the report. Okay. So when you are reviewing the report, you are not reviewing the academic content. You're not reviewing the assessment content as, as a, a chairperson, right? However, I have actually put an asterisk. Okay. But if you are the subject expert, so like I said, if this is a, a topic on economics and I'm looking at this and I find that an important component has been, uh, is missing. It means it was actually brought up Right. So you as a chairperson had brought up or the examiner has brought up and this is actually missing and you think that it should be included, reach out to the uh, examiners to say, to request whether you can put that in, right? But standard rule is if you do not review the academic content, meaning you don't look and say, oh, oh, you have said this, 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 or oh, this is right, this is wrong. No, you, sh you should not. Academic, academic assessment of it should not be done, right? Mm. Um, we review based on whether there is sufficient information on the corrections required, right? Um, sometimes I've noticed that, you know, this is like one liner, right? One liner or one or two lines, right? Even when I'm reading it, I'm thinking like, okay, I mean, it's not very clear, right? Um, thank God supervisor was there, maybe supervisor would have taken notes for that. But, you know, you, you would want to give a more detailed uh, you want to ensure the report given is a bit more detailed, right? So that the student, when the student is actually making corrections, the student can actually say, oh, okay, right? This, this is how I'm going to do this, or this, these are the changes mm. you mentioned, yeah? Even better, if you can actually give page number, right? Mm. You can just say, your proposal, this page, this page, right? This mm. is what. So mm. indicate that so that the student can actually find it easy to say, oh, okay, this is what they're meaning, right? This is what I need to make changes for, right? Um, Make sure examiner's report is not influenced by personal biases, mm. right? Because sometimes we we might um, have a certain understanding, right? That this is how it should be, right? Um, let's say, for example, uh, the research objective should, the action work that I need to use for my research objective has to be the same, right? Or... I cannot use the same, right? Things, things like that. These are personal, personal, personal opinions, personal experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Don't don't put that down, right? Unless you have very strong supporting evidence, right? That means, uh, that means let's say the examiner is now putting that in, and so don't don't allow those kind of comments. So go through that and say, okay, this this cannot be done. This cannot be done. Get back. Right to either PGRC or get back to the examiners and say, okay, so this this kind of information should be removed. This should not be put there. Yeah. Um, very 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 key that examiners' report should not touch on the candidate's caliber. Right. Um, things like the student is so poor. Right. Academically weak. Uh, <laughs> student. Right. Uh, is. Um, Right, mm. students' language is so bad. Right, always uh, remember that this is not about the person. This mm, is mm, about mm. the content what the mm. person has done. So, mm. if you want to say that okay, the language is so bad, so 
please do not say that, okay, the student's language is so bad. No. Mm, right? mm, mm. Uh, recommend for for the for the report to be uh, proofread next time before submission. You know, things mm, like that. Mm, You're mm, saying mm, the same thing, mm, but say it like that, right? Mm. Uh, never, never touch on the uh, supervisory committee, right? Don't mention about the supervisory committee because at this point, the supervisory committee has guided. We have come to this point. So, no comments about the supervisor or the supervisory committee should go into the report as well. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. um, even things like, let's say, for example, um, Trinity, right? So, let's say, for example, um, you, you feel like that this, okay, this one is, this idea has been plagiarized from somewhere, right? This is not the platform to include that information in. If you feel the it has been plagiarized, then you would want to actually bring this up as a separate conversation with PGRC and say, okay, no, you know, I found this, 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 because then it's about an academic dishonesty case already, right? But the examiner's report should always be based on an assessment that we are doing of the report that has been presented to us. So I think that's, that's important for us to remember. So this is the final one uh, as a chairman that the chairman would need to do. So end of session one. So I said, let's pause here. So for some reason, I, I thought I'm going to finish the session, like, you know, both session one and two within like two hours, but yeah, okay. No, but, but I, it has been a very, very good discussion. I mean, really appreciate um, the engagement that we are having, right? It's, it's been a very fruitful discussion. We're learning from, from all of us are learning from each other. So, so let me just, I'm just going to pause here. I'm going to stop sharing for a while. Uh, okay. Anything, anything to clarify, anything to ask? Maybe I want to add, uh, we should uh, set a different expectation or so-called benchmark for both proposal defense and VIVA. The VIVA is the final. Proposal defense here, our objective here, more towards helping the student you know, to improve on their preparation. Yeah? Not only the student, plus also the supervisor. You know, I told my student, I said, whatever feedback given by the examiner, take it constructively, you learn. Not only you learn, I, I also learn from their opinion. So I go and search, I go and check. So this will be a different uh, so-called level isn't it? for Viva and proposal defense. We should set a different type of uh, so-called benchmark, then from there, expectation will be different. If yeah. we put it together, then we are setting the same standard for the final VIVA and the proposal defense. That can be a danger. Um, I, I And I think this would actually be a discussions that we would need to have with uh, mm. PGRC. So I think um, that I, I think, you know, and, and that's that's how we will always improve, right? I mean, mm. we look at the documentation, we look at the processes and how yep. it's been done and how okay. it's been improved. And I, and I think a lot of these things, um, Jasmine is already doing, right? She, mm. she is, she's definitely looking into that. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Mm. so okay. Um, um, let me... Let me continue. Let me look at. <clears throat> Understanding the role of an examiner. Um, so. Pre-viva or pre-proposal defense. We have to read the thesis or the proposal line by line, right? Um, it's not so like 
as a chairman, we were actually just uh, skimming through or just scanning, right? But as an uh, examiner, it's line by line, yeah? And then uh, if you feel everything is okay, good to go, you prepare the report, right? So, and I feel like irrespective of whether it's for the for your viva or your proposal defense, preparing the report is actually key, right? Um, write it down later if you need to update, go ahead and update it, right? Because it's, it's a soft copy anyway, right? But mm. I think preparing the report ahead of time is important, right? Mm. And having a list of questions that has come up based on this is also equally important. Mm, yeah? mm. But let's say after you have read it and you realize that, hey, something is wrong. Something is not, you know, one, it's not up to mark, right? Or you feel like, oh, okay, this looks like, you know, uh, it has been the idea. I, I remember seeing this idea somewhere. It's been plagiarized, right? Mm. Then at that point itself, don't wait Okay, if, especially if you're you're seeing that you know this is actually of a not a good quality, <clears throat> it's not ready to go for uh, proposal defense or viva, right? Stop, speak to the other examiner, right? Ask, you know, I've gone through, I feel this is not ready. Do you, what? What is your opinion, right? Or if you if you you don't know who is the other examiner, then reach out, go go to PGRC or go to the school and say, all right, look. I, I have got this concern, right? I have got this concern. The student is not ready. If the student is going to go, most likely the student is going to fail. So can we at this point maybe consider, right? Maybe have a chat with the supervisors to say, okay, maybe needs to relook at a couple of things, right? Because I think if we go through that process, at least we will not be wasting our time, right? We would most likely be able to say, okay, this, this needs to more work, go back, do the work and then come back. So I, I think at this point, what uh, most of us do is when we get it, we say, okay, never mind, we'll take it, although we know this is not up to mark, and then we go. And then during that session, you know, and, and that's where the grilling session comes in, right? For the student, the grilling session comes in because the, the more question you will ask, right? And then, you know, the, the student is put in a very difficult position. This actually happens when the, the proposal defense of thesis is not up to mark. Right, mm. so we we don't want we want to avoid something like that, yeah. So this is pre, yeah. Now preparing for the Q and A. I just I just thought that I will just share some some of the experience that I have in terms of if you are an examiner and mm. you want to prepare for the Q and A or you want to prepare for the report, right? Mm. So I read. The whole thing first mm. and i will actually make notes i'll make my notes and i will say okay these are the points okay this these are the things that i need to put down i'll put it down first right i will actually look at the problem statement right i will look at the problem st statement to ask if the problem statement is actually valid mm. right whether that's actually a problem and then based on that i will then look at my research i will look at the research objectives Okay, so let's say, for example, the student has got, okay, uh, so before that, yeah, research objectives. Um, normally, for a PhD, you should have about ideal three, maximum four research objectives, because if it's going to be too, too many, it's going to be more than four, the thesis itself is actually going to be very, very thick, because you need to remember that if you have four objectives, the expectation is the literature review need to cover the four objectives. Your methodology needs to talk about it. Your framework needs to talk about it. Your analysis need to cover that four objectives or five objectives. So just, just be mindful that as an, as an examiner, it should be good to have about three to four objectives is what you want to have, right? Each of the objectives ideally should have one question, but if you don't have one question, you want to have more than one question, also can. So let's say one objective, you have got two questions, right? Maximum we go for two questions. We don't go more than that, right? So look, look at this point. So try to understand when you're looking at the objective as an examiner, what I do is I look at the research, the first research objective. I say, 
why are we doing this? I'll go back to the problem statement and I'll say, is there a link, right? I will look at the second objective, right? So I'll say why. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll give an example of my student, right? Um, my student uh, is actually doing on uh, internet connectivity, right? And so this student has actually wants to look at uh, internet connectivity in Eastern, uh, sorry, Western China, right? So I say, why? Why Western China? What's the problem, right? So she said, oh no, you know, this, 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 right? So, so then she gave me like all the, the income level there, you know, they're actually very, very low. The use of internet is very, she gave me all of those things. Then she said, oh, then I want to use, I want to look at um, the moderating effect of policy. So I say, why? Why policy? Right, so as supervisors, those are the questions that we would be asking. So as an examiner, you will need to ask, okay, second objective, huh? this one, why? What's the reason? So you want to go back to say, okay, is there a, a justification given, right? Third objective, I want to look at a mediating role. Why mediating, right? Mediating with what? Okay, where? What, what is the reason, right? So the problem statement needs to be able to address each of them. So if there is a research objective, I would want to see what is the problem that you are, you are addressing. So as an examiner, this is what you would want to do, right? Problem statement linked to your research objectives. Then whether the research questions have been answered accordingly. Yeah. Link that then to your literature review, research framework and methodology. So I want to discuss, I want to just share a bit on literature review, right? So what are the components of literature review that you expect to see? You want to see a theoretical review, right? Did, did the student do a theoretical review? Meaning the student has actually decided to go with a particular theory, right? So that particular theory will actually justify the research framework. So my, my research framework that I'm doing is because of I've chosen this theoretical review, right? I will look at my empirical evidence. Did the student give the empirical evidence? Because the empirical evidence will then link to the hypothesis which the student has developed, right? Because past studies have looked at this, this hypothesis. This, these are the empirical evidence that they have looked at. And these are the hypothesis, right? Finally, I want to see whether there's a gap analysis or not, right? What has the literature done? What has past studies done, right? What is it that, that this, this student or this candidate is actually doing? What is the novel contribution? What is the additional contribution which is happening here, right? So literature review, we'll look at it from that perspective. So this is, this is the link, right? So when I look at the theoretical review, I'll go and look at the framework. I look at empirical evidence, I look at the hypothesis. I look at a gap analysis and I'll say, okay, you're telling me this, this, this. If let's say the student is talking about gaps so much, but then contribution is totally something different. I say, there's no connection, right? So this will be in terms of the literature review. Then you look at your research, the student's research framework. Is it supported by theory, right? So let's say, for example, this is a theory and this theory, okay, so um, so let's say, for example, again, um, I, I'm just going to share about the, my student currently, right? So she has this um, theory on a uh, TEM theory that the student is using. So the TEM theory will actually, the technology adoption uh, theory. So this theory actually has got there are certain control variables, meaning that these domains need to be included, right? There are five domains that, must be included, right? So in the framework, I will expect to see this five framework, the five domains must be there, right? In addition, what is the contributing variables? That means what is this student contributing? The five domains, everyone has already talked about it, right? But what are you contributing to this, right? So I would want to see that included in the framework as well, because this is actually based on the gap analysis, right? And finally, in this case, contributing variables supported by past literature. So I, I cannot say, okay, I'm going to use this, this variables, but this is actually totally new. No one has done a study on this, cannot be, right? If you are including, if you are including these variables, 
maybe these variables have not been used in the context of technology adoption model. Doesn't matter, but definitely it would have been used in different contexts, right? You're taking those variables. So it has to be supported by past literature as well. It cannot be, there is no literature to support, right? So the minute you see a candidate not giving you your citations for the framework, that is already a big, big red flag, right? Methodology. You would want to look at the proposed method. You want to see whether the method that they have proposed, is it suitable based on the research objective? So let's say, for example, the research objective is actually, you look at it, it's actually going to be a quantitative research, right? But the, the student, the proposed method that the student is talking about is secondary research. That means talking about uh, time series data, for instance, is a no, cannot, right? It doesn't jive, right? So whether the method and the research objectives can be tied together, you would want to do that, yeah? The sampling techniques that they have done, right? Most, most of the time, the student will just simply say one, one technique, right? But then you want to sit down and you ask, why are you choosing this sampling technique? Right? Why, why is this relevant? Okay. So let's say I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to use purposeful sampling. Right? Okay. Purposeful sampling. Why? Right? Then the student says, oh, I'm going to use a random sampling. All right? Why random sampling? Sorry. One minute. Yeah. Marcos. I am conducting a training, the PhD, yeah, I'm conducting a training. I told Prof Hon, please tell her, please tell her, yes, thanks, thanks. Until six, but I'm, I'm hoping I can finish sooner, then I'll join, okay. Sorry, there's another meeting going on, so I've been called for that, okay. <laughs> um, the sample represents the population. So these are some of the things that you would want to pick up. As an examiner, you want to see whether these are being addressed or not. Okay. How will the data be collected? Right? So let's say, for example, if they're saying that, you know, sometimes they will say, oh, you know, um, it's a focus group and I'm going to now discuss, uh, I'm actually going to collect data. I'm going to actually have a focus group with uh, a group of um, CEOs, for instance. Then you, then you pause and then, and then you ask them, how are you going to collect this data from the CEOs? Do you know the CEOs personally, right? Uh, how, how do you plan to do this? Because I think it's important when the students, especially when they're doing proposal defense, they're actually very gung-ho. They feel like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, right? But you just want to be actually, you just want to probe and to ask them, have you thought about it? So what are the challenges in collecting data? So these, these are some of the things that you would want to, to prepare for the Q&A, yeah? The analysis technique, the research objectives, and the data type. You want to make sure there is a co there is an alignment, right? So like, like I mentioned earlier, so let's say, for example, the student is actually telling, okay, you know what? I want to use um, SCM, right? Uh, to measure an objective of, let's say, the objective is looking at uh, a time series behavior. I know time series behavior cannot be tested using SEM, right? It cannot be based on, so I, I cannot use secondary data for this, right? So these are things we know. So we would want to now ask and say, hey, no, it doesn't make sense, right? You want to ask whether there were ethics consideration put in, okay? So for example, if you're saying that, oh, I'm actually going to do, I'm going to um, carry out a, a, a research with a group of, let's say I'm, I'm doing a study on um, abused women, abused wives, or I'm doing a study on uh, single mothers, right? So I'll say, okay, there are, this one has got um, privacy consideration. Have you considered your ethics consideration? Have you, have you put this to it? Have you thought about it, right? So these are ethics consideration that you need to be mindful of, right? So the whole idea of the proposal defense is to 
pro and to get the students prepared for this. Yeah, so ethics consideration. When they have questionnaires, you want to ask whether the questionnaire, so the questionnaires that they are having has to be adapted, meaning the students cannot say, oh, I have actually come up with this questionnaire. This is the first time I have come up with the questionnaire. Okay, please, that cannot be done, right? Unless this is a primary qualitative data, right? And you're going to use this for a focus group, right? And you're going to do a pilot test for that. Then yes, okay? But if not, the questionnaire needs to be adapted, right? But it can be adapted. So if you're adapting it, you're adapting it in full, or you can actually adapt it, meaning that you can actually make minor changes if you want to, right? So you, you have to ask the, question, the students this question as well. You have to ask them in terms of the scale, the, the Likert scale. If it's a questionnaire, right? You cannot have a Likert scale for one question. It cannot be five, um, five points. Another one is seven points, right? You cannot have differing Likert scales. You have to use the same Likert scale, right? So these are, these are some of the probing questions that you would want to ask, yeah? So other consideration in text citation, the citation style, the reference list, right? These are some of the things that you would want to uh, look into. Okay. Now I'm going a bit fast. Are there any, any questions? Okay. If you are an examiner, things to avoid. Um, Nitpicking, nitpicking meaning that, you know, like, like how we discussed earlier about um, something too technical, right? Oh, okay, how is this? How is this, right? About the grammar, don't, don't nitpick in those kind of things, right? Uh, don't be too technical, right? Meaning if the student has already given, let's say the student is actually using um, for methodology specifically, all right? So they have actually done, um, they're they saying that they need to run certain tests, all right? Don't, don't ask, okay, so if you're using this particular test, how do you do this? How do you do that, right? Don't be too technical because the student might not actually know and the student actually doesn't need to know. The student would most importantly need to know how to interpret the results rather than knowing the technicality bit of, of the process itself, right? You don't have to repeat previously asked questions. Right. Uh, if another, if the first examiner has asked it, you don't have to repeat that question. Right. Um, don't criticize without providing any opportunities for students to answer. Um, question on established findings. Okay. So so if let's say we know that. Okay. So let's say for example, this is um, that the ten theory is established. Right. If you want to talk about technology adoption, it's a ten theory. Ten uh, theory that you use, right? So we know that for a fact. So you, you don't ask questions like, why are you using this, right? Isn't there something better, right? So questions on established findings and all should be avoided, right? Um, pushing an idea based on your understanding. Okay, so, so let's say, for example, you feel like, okay, this one is, um, this is how it should be done. So like the example that I gave earlier, you know what, if, Let's say uh, if you're coming up with a research question, the research question should have different action verbs for each one of it, must have different action verb, right? If that the action verb is repeated, cannot, right? So these are personal, personal uh, ideas. So don't push uh, ideas based on your understanding. Unless this is required, you know that this is what the literature says, <clears throat> then you would want to actually follow this, yeah? Okay, <clears throat> preparing for examiner's report. Okay, currently, um, if you're preparing for the examiner's report, it is good to give a breakdown in each of this because I think our proposal defense form at the bottom, we actually have got an empty space where we can actually put in the area. So introduction, your problem statement, research question, research objective, literature review. So, you know, like how I had shared 
literature review based, okay, is there a theoretical review? Is there an empirical evidence? Is there a gap analysis, right? In terms of methodology, again, a breakdown, right? In terms of analysis, if it's a viva analysis, so give details, right? Give it by heading so that then the student knows, oh, this is what you're talking about, right? It will be easier for the students to be guided. Yeah. So provide feedback on all key areas. Avoid general statement, right? So example, problem statement is not well developed, full stop. It's not going to help the students come up with uh, a revised problem statement with something like that. Okay, you can say, okay, so I'm just actually taking this. So let's say, for example, I'm talking about tourism in a remote village in Malaysia, for example, right? So saying that problem statement, right, doesn't identify specified challenges. Okay, in what area? Geographic, social, economic barriers, right? And additionally, the statement does not sufficiently explain why addressing the challenges is crucial. So give, give a bit of a context, right? So that the students can read and then say, oh, okay. So even, even if you're looking at it, the first statement and the state, second statement, there's so much of difference. If I need to improve, the second statement is actually going to help me greatly, yeah? So avoid general statements. Questions and clarification, include all questions or points that you raised during the viva or proposal defense, right? So, if you have asked, you have asked different, different areas. So whatever questions or concerns that you have raised during the proposal defense, put it in unless you feel that the student has adequately answered your question. So when you brought it up, the student was able to give you a justification. And say, oh, yeah, OK, I understand. Right. I'm going to let this go. So provide a record of the key issues discussed right, and help justify your assessment. Yeah. But however, I think it's also important to remember that we don't want, as examiners, we don't want to give differing points. So that means, if let's say, if I'm examiner one, I'm putting down, okay, do this, this, this. Examiner two is actually going to give something totally opposite. So students will sit down and think, who do I follow? This person is telling me to do go north this person is telling me to go south where do i go all right so it's important to align your report with the criteria and overall assessment right so you would want to now say if there is a disagreement right you would want to now align okay? most likely this one when the when the chairperson is reading the chairperson would also be picking up but as examiners i think it's also important for us to do that to avoid any confusion that student might have yeah on on this point uh, mm. on this point mm. we we don't read the other examiner's report so how do we understand the thing so we are doing it independently on our own good good point right. good point mm. and and i think this is where uh jasmine actually comes in now jasmine comes in but then it will be the role of the chairperson then mm. right the role of the chairperson but you see, so that, that is that is the current problem, huh, Dr. Yi. One mm. of the things that I've noticed is um, there is actually so much of, um, you know, like how the information is, so the information sometimes is so general, mm. right? But then if you're actually now putting it down by headings, right? Mm. Then then we can, it's actually easier to compare, right? Agreed, so agreed. most likely mm. this is something that, you know, uh, we need to discuss with PJRC and uh, Dr. Jasmine to see but it's possible for us to put it as headings. Mm. Right and and get them to come. Yes. Mm. So yeah, but but good point. Good point. So not so much examiners then, but more of the chairperson then. Mm. Be mindful. Uh, professional and not use languages that could be seen as harsh or dismissive. I think that's that's actually very important. Uh, focus on issues and not people. And. Instances of high plagiarism. Okay. Uh, ideal to highlight this to the school before the session. If it's a if it's a turn it in report, which is actually a high percentage, it's very, very even the supervisor will be able to pick it up. But you know, sometimes we have cases where you know, um, I, I, I don't know whether, you know, but we have heard cases where, you know, like this is actually been published in one language. The, the research has already been published in one language. The student takes it and then the student actually translates it 
into another language, right? Then the, the system is not able to, to check. Okay, things like that do happen. But you know, some, sometimes the, the examiner might have actually read it and say, hey, I know this, this thing, you know, this has been designed. So if something like that has come up, right? So you would want to actually highlight, highlight to the school, right? If you had not picked it up earlier before the examiner's report was uh, prepared, even after the viva, you actually would want to highlight this, right? So in conclusion, I think um, recognize that a candidate has invested significant time and effort into developing their thesis or proposal. Okay, and I think throughout uh, and 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 I think all all of us or most of us subscribe to this, right? Our end goal is for what is best for the student, right? Um, we want to, we want to recognize what the student has done, right? So sometimes it's very obvious when an examiner is actually not prepared, right? And um, it, it becomes very obvious because the examiner is actually asking questions based solely on what the student's, student's oral presentation, right? And that should not be the case, right? Um, we should respect. I feel like, you know, as examiners, we have been given this opportunity, right, or this responsibility to uh, assess a candidate's uh, paper or a, a proposal or a report, right? So um, we would we would need to give that much of time, right? So acknowledging the significance of the examiner's role, if it's a survivor, we can actually be given up to two months to prepare for this, right? So so what it, what it tells us is, right, that the institution recognizes that that piece of work as so much of effort has gone into it, so the, it actually needs that much of time for us to read and prepare for it, right? So using that, that two months or three months to actually prepare for it is actually very important. So doing justice to the student, I think, I think is actually key, right? I mean, if, if, it was, if it was just just put ourselves in the shoes, right? If it's my, if I'm going for a proposal defense of this, I would want the examiner to take the time to actually read and not just come for the session and listen to what I'm going to present and give comments, right? So that's in conclusion. So one one question. Sure. Go ahead. For the, for the final viva, mm. if you if you serve as an internal examiner, mm. are we going to be paid? Since oh. you are paying an external examiner, why not the internal examiner? We pay the external examiners. I don't think so. You mean external examiner? You don't pay them for well, the final viva? I, I have been an external examiner. I have not received any payment. I have been receiving. No. <laughs> it's, it's, institutions don't pay. Institutions hey? don't. Yeah, no. Then who pay? No. I'm sure. I, I'm sure the external examiner is paid. Uh, sorry, I just come in now. Uh, according huh. to the PGRC policy, is that all external examiner will be paid for PhD level, right? One thousand, huh. oh. and huh. then for okay. master level, five hundred. That's huh. the, our policy. Uh, so how about internal okay. examiner? Internal right? examiner, we don't pay because you already receive your pay, right? You already <laughs> receive your salary for that. That is the justification. Okay, I hope that clarify. Okay. <laughs> obviously, obviously, I have been taken for the right because I've been an examiner and not been paid. Mm. But yeah, okay, tougher. <laughs> okay, yes. I and and I think that's that's policy. Actually, actually, doctor, you know, um, normally internals they are not paid lah. So yes. But then, uh, other university they pay internal examiner. They pay. So our policy said no. That's why I purposely ask a question. If, <laughs> if, if, uh, if other people are, pay, are paying the internal examiner, why not? Uh, you all of you. Nothing boy, la, Dr. Wu, you. <laughs> you to ask questions like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for the others. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think no. La. I think we... I mean, anyway. Uh, I think I, as policy, <laughs> as for policy, no. So, <laughs> so okay. So with that, I'm done with my presentation. Um, any any questions?
see if I have got any questions on the chat. How about you, Dr. Tan from Penang? Uh, Dr. Oi, uh, so far I think uh, Dr. Uh, Prof. Uh, Suti give a very clear explanation plus you and plus Dr. Yong. So seriously, we, I get some so-called value information from you all. Uh. Okay, thank you. Thank you much. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank Prof. you. Saranan here from Penang. Uh. Thank you, uh, Prof. Good sharing. Hi. Uh. Thanks, Saranan. Yeah. Saran, I'm not seeing your face. You don't want to switch on your camera. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Can I put you on the spot? <laughs> it's okay. If, if you don't want to, it's okay. <laughs> any 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 other questions? Anything else that you want to clarify? Anything to ask? If if there are no questions, if there are no questions, um, thank you very much for attending. Um, I will I will share the slides, my slides with uh, Dr. Jess. Uh, sorry, I will share it with um, Ali uh, for him to share uh, for the participants. Yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And very good session. Uh, very good session. Hmm? Thank you, Dr. Wei. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for participating in this uh, wonderful session and workshop from Dr. Sotis this, this evening. All right. So, see you guys uh, probably on Friday. We have another workshop coming in Friday from 9 to 1 p.m. Okay, then. Okay. Thank you very much, okay, guys. Bye. Everyone. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.